Welcome into the PHNX Sun Devils show. I'm Anthony Totry, joined as always by Sean DePaz. And it is time for the very first walk of shame in the Kenny Dillingham era because the Sun Devils fall to Oklahoma State by a final score of 27 to 15. The Sun Devils looked good in the first half or good enough to take a little bit of an early lead against the Cowboys. But when push came to shove, Arizona State simply couldn't hang in that second half. We have a lot to get to. We, we've got a fan flick at the game at the very tail end of this show. We've got heat index. We've got bottle service. We've got the numbers. We've got everything. But Sean, first and foremost, man, just what was your reaction to, to what you saw specifically in that second half? Yeah, I, I mean, the second half was just lifeless. Like, I, it's... It didn't feel like last year where it was like uh, the coaches were shooting somebody in the foot or, yeah. or whatever. Like, it just felt like nobody really did their job in the second half. Like, nobody. Not even the punter. Like, <laughs> um, shout out Josh Carlson, though. But, I mean, even then, he didn't have a great game by punter standards. Like, it, no no one did their job in the second half. The 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 coaches made bad decisions. I wasn't a fan of going for it on fourth down and, uh, with about, what was it, like five and a half, six minutes left Yeah. Um, on their own side of the field. Um, I wasn't a fan of one of the times where they went to the scat package like it was just a i felt like at a certain point in the second half it became predictable um uh shout out to the the defense the front seven really i feel like they did their job but secondary didn't really do their job uh pass catchers didn't really do their job guillory dropping that massive pass that could yeah. have completely changed the game like um and, and yeah i wanted to saying it like they didn't really get the ball to the, any other playmakers enough like I, I really just don't feel like anyone particularly on the offensive side of the ball did their jobs uh, in the second half, and that's why it looked the way it did. I mean, and the defense wasn't great either. I mean, they, uh, they uh, Oklahoma State went to the half with no pat rush yards, and they ended with 115 or something like that. Like, that's not going to get you. It's not going to win you any football game. So it was just a uh, really underwhelming and really just kind of depressing second half performance. Yeah, no, specifically in that second half, right? Like, I, there's people that have talked about it already in the chat. Chris brings it up. Bo Baldwin, please don't be Glenn Thomas with a mask on. Like you have your freshman quarterback. I get that. But we have we, we, we've seen so many weapons yeah. on this offense with Jalen Conyers, Elijah Badger, um, BP, Messiah Swinson, Xavier Guillory. Like the list goes on and on. But you couldn't even be watching the game and you just watch the stat broadcast and you see one yard, run, yeah. three yard completion. And, and that's the thing. Like it's it's a weird like dichotomy because like Donald's saying like Kenny tried doing too much but at the same time it seemed like they didn't do enough like they the times that they decided to get real aggressive felt really odd like it, it felt like the play calling itself wasn't crazy aggressive and I mean like they did different things right like obviously they had that scat package that they they used a bunch but even then like at the end of the day that was just a run between the tackles like it, it wasn't like they did anything all that crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I felt like it was the play calling in general was not all that adventurous until it shouldn't have been. Um, I like it. I mean, Jaden wasn't great either. He, there was pl plenty of times where he was making freshman mistakes. I mean, in the first half, he ran out of bounds instead of throwing the ball away and took like a two yard sack for no real reason. Like yeah. there's little things like that that happen. And it goes back to what I was saying. Like it really didn't feel like anyone really did their jobs all that well, especially in the second half. No, yeah. I mean, you bring up Jaden. He was 16 of 29, a buck 67 and a touchdown. Uh, nothing that's going to blow you away, uh, which, again, you, you kind of understand part of the freshman mistakes, but yeah. you also got to realize that part of that buck 67, 65 of it was on a single play well, to Elijah yeah. Badger. And that's the thing. Like, I, I don't feel like they really gave, and I get, again, being somewhat conservative, I guess, with your freshman quarterback, because, like I said, there were moments where he made – uh, somewhat freshman mistakes, but yeah. like you got you got to give him more of an. The reason he's starting is because of his big play ability, and you got to give him ability to make like for him to make big plays, not for him to throw screen passes to to whoever for them to make plays. Like it, it it's got to be everybody. Uh, or so like I I don't know. It, it felt like they they could have been more aggressive in that regard. Yeah, um, and throwing the ball downfield a little bit more, and maybe that would have opened up things for for scat and for de carlos um but it's 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 hard to know because i mean we could easily be sitting here where they keep throwing the ball down the field and it's not working we're like well, why do you keep throwing the ball down but field, so. but at that point in chat chime in here like at least you're giving your quarterback yeah that no, shot, no, no. Right? I, yeah i would much rather see that like i would rather that outcome because part it, of this is is getting Jaden equipped 
to handle these situations in the future, right? If everybody wants to say Jaden Rashad is the guy right now for the future, yeah. then part of that is letting him get those yeah. mistakes out of his system as a freshman 100%. quarterback. Yeah, and I mean, like, it, yeah, it just... I mean, we were talking about this coming into the season, talking about Jalen Connors being the best tight end maybe in the country. Yeah. Definitely in the conference. And he had four catches for 17 yards. Yeah. Which I don't feel like was a product of Jalen's performance. It was no. just... It, they weren't putting... Uh, whether they were either Jalen or Jaden, they weren't putting them in a position to succeed in that regard. Um, like it's it's tough. Like it, you, it's hard to say that the the offensive playmakers weren't making plays when given an opportunity. They just really didn't. And yeah, Austin, it took a little too long to bring this up. Austin bringing up a very important point: the offensive line was just not there today. And yeah. aside, Glass wasn't playing. Like they they were. Um, Dealing with injuries on the offensive line, it was not their preferred starting five. And I think that definitely reared its ugly head. Like that, especially in that second half. We were seeing guys just not put up any kind of a fight on the offensive line and and getting back to putting Jaden in a position to succeed. Like if you're already talking about dealing with a freshman quarterback's freshman mistakes, putting him under pressure is not going to make that problem any better. Yeah. Um, and so it's hard to say the offensive line needs to I mean, the offensive line does need to be better, but they also weren't playing at full strength, so um, that's not an excuse. No, I mean, yeah, at a certain at a certain point, you need guys to just step up. Um, but um, yeah, the offensive line, like like I said, nobody was really that good, you know, especially in the second half. No one did their jobs. Yeah, Asaya Glass was in a, a walking boot pregame, mm -hmm. so he didn't play tonight. Cade Briggs, I believe he had a brace on this evening as well. He didn't suit up. Uh, and then obviously it doesn't help to have your starting right tackle and Emmett Bowl go down. Yeah. I believe the second offensive play. Like th this is a team that was, you know, from start to finish, they were without, like you said, the full strength of their offensive line. And it doesn't help that the offensive line in general was already a position of concern yeah, the, yeah. for this team. Right. So you knew that it was already going to be a little bit shaky, regardless of what Oklahoma State's defense was going to throw at you. But it, it doesn't help that you lose your your two tackles uh, and then Bram Walden obviously starting at left tackle. So that that is obviously what it is. Another big part, we've talked about the second half. I want to get into special teams here for a second because you brought it up. People on social media brought it up. I'm sure everybody in the chat understands it too, right? Like special teams may not be the reason that you win and lose every single game or it's not mm. the reason that, that you know, people are going to see your highlights on ESPN. But at the end of the day, Josh Carlson had four punts and he averaged 37 yards per punt. That's yeah. not good enough. That's no. not good enough. You're giving Oklahoma State the benefit of field position yeah. every and single that, that, time. They were happening at, happening at very bad times. Like when, when ASU was, they were, they were given, they, these weren't 37 punts, 37 yard punts from ASU's own 43 yard line. They were yeah. from like their own 23 yard line, um, which, yeah, you're, and and the defense was good today, like I, in general, I would say. But at a certain point, like they're only going to be able to do so much if you're giving them the the, the other team starting with the ball at the fifty yard line. Um, so like, yeah, I, I it literally again, nobody was doing their jobs. Um, it, it yeah, it, it down to the punter. It was just not a good performance at all from anybody in the second half. No, yeah, the second half was like you said, a little lifeless. Um, Julian t t TV 16 from here on out. Uh, people need to relax I, I, with all that. People I, need to relax with that. I, 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 I understand that there is going to be a lot of folks out there that really want to see a quarterback change. And whether that be to, to Trenton or when Drew Pine comes back, I think there's going to be a, a lot of people that want to lean on him as well. But you got to understand that this is just week two. Yeah. Like again, and I don't, he wasn't the reason they lost. I don't think he, I, he could have done more to help. He could have been, been better, better for sure, but he was not the reason they lost. No, I would say, I agree. Um, I mean, even if, if I brought up earlier, if X catches that one pass, this game looks completely different. Um, and again, it, I don't think you can sit here and blame Jaden and then also blame the play calling and all that in the same breath. Like it, it, to a certain extent, it's one or the other. Um, and I don't ultimately feel like Jaden or Jalen was, Jaden was put in a great enough position to succeed um, today. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, it's a tough at, situation. At a certain point, I like at a certain point, I want you to be going to your quarterback on on. Yeah, no, I don't know. It 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 was it is tough. Like it, it was it was weird because we were walking over here 
earlier like i was just like i don't know what to make of this like i don't know who to blame i don't know it's it's tough and this is this is Any, why yeah. i think it's a little bit more of a challenge to to pin this game down right is because usually when you talk about a win or loss you can point to something specific major yeah. that happened right you can point to a specific player going crazy you can point to a specific play whatever but when it came to asu losing tonight the the three things for me that you look at aren't necessarily major things but they add up yeah right you have a, an inconsistent shaky second half which in and of it by itself we saw in week one wasn't enough to derail this team well yeah away. i mean that's one thing if we were sitting here doing an oklahoma state post game show we would be complaining about how wildly un it, like unconvincing and unimpressive the win was because Oklahoma State did nothing special as far as I'm concerned. They they're, they played three quarterbacks. None of them did anything crazy. Yeah, that you shouldn't lose to a team no, that plays I, three I quarterbacks. Know. You dude. definitely shouldn't. You shouldn't. None of them. None of them were doing anything crazy. Like it was. I don't feel like the defense. Their defense was the reason that ASU's oh. offense was so lethargic. Like it. it this was Oklahoma State was a Andrew said he took the word right in my mouth a beatable team. That's exactly what they were. That this was a game that if ASU was doing what ASU was supposed to do, ASU had the talent to win this game. That's oh, not absolutely. even a question at all. They're were, they're were the more talented team, but they just didn't utilize any of that talent properly. Um, and that's what I think makes it tough. Like this was not a game that ASU it felt like ASU should have lost. Um, well, I mean, they should have lost it because they were lethargic in the second half, but it, it, it was. It was a game that they definitely could have won if they had, like you said, if a couple of things had gone differently. We're talking about a win, an unconvincing win, but we're talking about a win. And yeah, a win nonetheless a would be win. something. And yeah. I mean, you talk about a couple things that go differently. A couple things that go differently are some of those fourth down mm. um, calls and, and just the way that those fourth downs kind of played out where they were in the game. Uh, I know when we were sitting in the press box, it was just didn't agree with some of the, the, the play calling there on fourth. And, you know, we don't get paid to 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 make those calls, but at the end of the day, when everybody in the press box and like you tweeted out, when you're running the scat package at that point in the game everybody on fourth down, knows everybody knows where the ball's going. Yeah. And but at that point, right, it is also like th this is if I'm if I'm Kenny and if I'm Bo, because Kenny's Bo's the one calling the plays. Kenny obviously gets final say though. If you're running that scat package, right, at the end of the day, like you said, everybody knows where the ball's going. That's Kenny and Bo saying, we believe that our guys are better, regardless of them knowing where the ball's going. And at the end of the day, they just weren't on fourth down. They weren't. Yeah, no, it was, it, yeah, I, that, that was the thing, like, it, it was just, it be, like I said, it became wildly predictable. Like, it, it, it you, you knew when, and when you, when your tight end lines up behind the center, everyone in America knows what's coming next. And it didn't work because it was predictable. Um, and it, yeah, it, that that part was depressing, especially considering how much hope we had for the the post Glenn era. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not by any means being like uh, fire, fire uh, bow or anything like that. Um, I, I think this will be a little bit of a learning experience. Oh, hopefully, for sure. I, I mean, I, and I'll say this going before the season like I, we knew this team was going to be aggressive and i think that was exciting and so i don't want to sit here and like crucify the team for being aggressive in no. some of those moments because I, I i'm a fan of it like like it, it, ltc like kenny letting his nuts hang a little bit like i said that specifically when when he went for for two after the 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 penalty on the extra point like there was no real reason to do that but fuck it why not and like i i i appreciate that like i love that um but there is obviously a line, and I feel like it was crossed in the sense that, like I said earlier, that 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 last fourth down attempt on, or I mean, not the last one, but that one with about six minutes left in the fourth quarter, like that was not the time to go for for to go for it on fourth down there. No, um, you, I mean, you look at it, right? You look at it throughout the game, and even through through last week, you understand that this team is going to be aggressive, and that's their identity, yeah. right? Like the fourth and eight last week, Jaden Rashada hits Xavier Guillory. That works for a touchdown. You're a hero. If it doesn't, you're everyone's yeah, scratching exactly. their head. What the fuck are you doing? Exactly. The two-point conversion on the one-yard line, you look great because it went in. Some of the other fourth down calls, people are like, oh, what the hell was this? And you look back at that that last touchdown that Oklahoma State had to, to really seal the deal. Brian Ward and that defense, it looked like they brought the blitz there on that third down, and they were trying, obviously, to get Oklahoma State out of field goal range at that point in the game, and it ended up resulting in a touchdown, which, you know, it is what it is. 
uh, the, the entire game's not built on, on that one specific play or that one specific yeah. drive. The coaches will tell you they had all game to, to put Oklahoma State away, and they simply didn't. Uh, but those those are really the, the the key things for me, right? You look at the second half. You look at the fourth down. You look at the special teams. And like we said, those things in and of themselves – wouldn't necessarily be enough. Yeah, to, to lose I mean, a game, normally you're not sitting up. here talking about your punter averaging 37 yards a punt. Like that's not, and by no means, like it's not fair to Josh Carlson to sit here and pretend like he's the reason. No, absolutely not. Not to say that you're doing that, but like, <laughs> JJ. like it, it, it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where like when you keep when all of these little things go wrong, like you said, it it does add up. Um and. And, and I mean, uh, that's another thing. Donald's bringing up a very important thing. Cause, like, and I mean, I see people in the chat talking about like, uh, like, I mean, Kyle saying it exactly what makes it's difficult to examine, right? Like, is it, are they compensating for Rashada being inexperienced? Are they holding Rashada back? Does Rashada have the full playbook, stuff like that? And at the end of the day, like we're talking about one of the longest tenured coaches in all of college football versus a guy, the youngest coach in FBS play, coaching his second game, his first yeah. game against a real opponent. Like uh, to a certain extent, I do think that they did get on, out coached. Um, by Gundy and his staff, and that to a certain extent is to be expected. I mean, he's been doing it forever, and and Dilly hasn't. But again, you're not making excuses. Like this was a game they should have won. Oh, um, absolutely. Or at the very least, could have won. I'm not going to say they should have again because they didn't play good enough to. They didn't deserve to win, but they no. certainly could have. Yeah, like you said, they were the more talented team, and they just didn't put it together specifically in that second half. Let's go ahead and take a look at, at some of the numbers um, of tonight's game. Obviously, the only number that matters is that final score at the end of the day. Oklahoma State coming out on top, twenty-seven to fifteen over the Sun Devils. Looking at the total yardage uh, for both these teams tonight, uh, OSU out yardaging, I guess. Uh, the Sun Devils three hundred four to two seventy-seven. Uh, both teams racked up three sacks tonight. And this is a big one. You look at the fourth down numbers. Mm. Uh, Oklahoma State didn't go for it on fourth down. Arizona State going for it five times and only um, getting one of those. And then those red zone trips, Oklahoma State was four for four. ASU just one of one. Sean, what number out there sticks out the most? I mean, it's to me, it's the red zones um, because that's emblematic of ASU's just inability to get the ball to the other side of the field, really. Yeah. Like it, they, they were not. They they just weren't effective at moving the ball down the field, and that that it just at no point during this game like it was a game they should have or, or could have won. But once you got to the second half, I wasn't like any time they got the ball, I wasn't like okay, they're gonna come, they're gonna go down the field and score here. Yeah, it was like oh, God, I hope they can score, but it wasn't any kind of like confidence. They, they just were wildly incapable of doing anything that effective offensively. Um, I mean, one touchdown was basically because the I mean they just ran the scat pack two plays in a row for like a 30 yard gain and that was one and then the other one was uh was the uh, the big touchdown so it was just wildly wildly uninspiring offense it's just unimpressive by and large um and I think that that red zone number is emblematic of that yeah no it, it's absolutely unimpressive and I think that's the thing that kind of worries Sun Devil fans and let, let us know in the chat right is you're coming off the heels of an offense where yeah. it was just, we're going to feed one and see what happens at this point. You're like, okay, I really hope this isn't, this isn't it. And you see glimpses, you see it's like serious sparks of what this offense can be. Yeah. And like, that's why I think it's a little like, what are we well, doing? I mean, that's the one thing is that like the, the, uh, the, the handful of times when they did throw the ball downfield, like, it's not like we kept seeing them throw the ball downfield and Rashada just like overshooting his receivers by 10 yards or them being like wildly like a lot of the times when they went on the field, it, it worked. Yeah. And so that's the frustrating part is like is just the lack of aggressiveness. And, and I, to a certain extent, I I, like, I understand it. You, you don't want to because because if you start being hella aggressive, the only person that's going to get blamed for the ASU's downfall if they don't succeed is going to be Jaden Rashad. But it's it's weird to be a, in my mind. It's weird to be so aggressive on like fourth down and two point conversions, but yeah, to no, not that, be aggressive that's what I was in the actual about play calling. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's why it's so frustrating because they were aggressive at really weird times. They they and even when they were being aggressive, the play calling itself wasn't aggressive. Yeah. Like they they were going for it on, on on like last week it was fourth down and they threw the ball downfield. They didn't do that today, which I'm not saying necessarily it's the right decision because you got Jalen Conyers and Scat and they should be able to get one two yards but um it, it was just 
it was it was just a giant head scratcher of a game for a lot of reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we continue this conversation, I want to tell you guys a little bit about our friends over at Pins and Aces. They are the official golf apparel partner of PHNX and All City. Uh, guys, check out Big Drive Energy wherever you get your podcasts as well. Pins and Aces is the perfect, affordable, comfortable golf mm. attire for anybody, not only in the Valley, but really everywhere. But especially guys. in the Valley because it's breathable as hell and it's hot. It is hot. It is absolutely hot. And guess what? Tomorrow, Sunday, throw on your Pins and Aces mm. polo. Maybe go get a front nine before the NFL kicks off. That sounds like a beautiful Ooh, way to, to spend the morning. Uh, check out pinsandaces.com and use that code PHNX to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. Guys, that's pinsandaces.com. Despite how this game went, real fans support their teams no matter what, that's do true. or die, win or loss. Um, and if you're a real fan and you need some some merch to show that you're a real fan, I'm not going to just take your word for it. You got to <laughs> rep. You got you to gotta be repping ASU out in these streets. And there's no better place to get the merchandise to rep ASU out in these streets than FOCO. Because FOCO is the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise. Um they got a bunch of stuff. I again, I've said this a couple of times. Learned not too long ago that like a lot of the bobbleheads they make are limited edition. If you turn them over, it has like it'll say like bobblehead two out of forty three of this one kind made, um, which is crazy to me. Um, so check them out. Fogo always has our back for Arizona sports, and they have yours too. Get the best gear around by visiting www.foco.com using code PHNX for all non pre sale items. Use the code PHNX for ten percent off. Yeah, Danny in the chat. Uh, JR isn't ready yet. We need a DP injury update. Yeah. Uh, Drew Pine didn't dress tonight. Uh, he has been uh, dressed sometimes at practice uh, since the whole hamstring thing, but it's still kind of a TBD as to when he is going to be ready to go. So we'll obviously see what transpires, but I don't imagine Arizona State is going to be making a quarterback change anytime soon, but that is just me. Now, Sean, I know Arizona State fell uh, 27-15 tonight, but... There was one guy specifically that really, really put the nation on notice, and he had himself a day. He, he's been working his ass off in practice to get here, uh, and that's B.J. Green getting bottle service tonight. A guy, two sacks, and he had two and a half sacks all last year, three TFLs, and then three hurries as well. Yeah, he, he, he was a beast tonight, and, and that's why he was a large part of why I say, like, the front seven wasn't that bad. They, they, they I feel like, did a pretty good job at making the quarterback on quarterbacks, plural, uncomfortable and, and and bj green was was i mean the epitome of that he, he was getting pressure um he, he was good all over the place um and it was it was a bright spot like it was good to see because i think on the other side of the, the ball like the, the, the trenches in general were the big question mark. yeah the offense and defense and so to see somebody shine um on the defensive side of the ball against the, i mean talking about big 12 offensive linemen big 12 is known for their offense like they, they is not it was not something Utah they did this against. So no, and they it, actually it had sacks this week. They didn't yeah. have sacks last week. Yeah, so. yeah, very good point. So it was certainly an impressive performance. Yeah, and I know uh, Clayton Smith's sack got washed away because of a defensive holding call, but he had a, mm -hmm. a sack earlier in the night as well. Like, this is what you want to see, and we've talked about it. The defense, it feels like, is getting into a little bit of a rhythm. I know it is only yeah. game two. It is a long season, uh, but there were some serious bright spots you look specifically in that first half to the way this team stopped the run, and mm -hmm. I almost tweeted it out, and I'm glad I didn't because in the second half, like yeah. we said earlier, Oklahoma State kind of found some success running the football. Um, but ASU's run defense is drastically improved oh my to what they were a season ago. Dude, yeah, it was Donnie's so defense was like Oprah. Last year. Everybody got a fucking first down. <laughs> Everybody. You get yards. You yeah, get yards. You get a first you down. You get a first down. Yeah, no, it was it was Swiss cheese last year, and it definitely seemed uh, significantly improved. And obviously, they were not put in a great position, as Donald and a few of the people in the chat were saying. I, I think the offense and special teams largely let the defense down. Um, but specifically, like we, how many times tonight did you say like need to get a turnover? Need yeah. to get a turnover. And, and I do not think and. The defensive backs were not great. Specifically, Ro Torrance, I think, was had a really bad game. Um, and so I think to be able to have your offensive or your defensive line kind of kill momentum for the other team and create some negative plays when maybe the secondary isn't really doing that, um, that that's huge. Because if your offense is doing isn't if your defensive line is not doing it and your secondary is not doing it, 
And nobody's doing anything. And yeah, I don't. Like I don't. Last year. I don't know about what what happened with Roe. It just it looked like he was just a little off today. Yeah. Uh, JC was obviously JC. BJ Green was BJ Green. Um, but it, yeah, the defense. I, I don't put a whole lot of fault on them in this no. game. Again, you, you play I mean, the we, way we, you play. They held a, a packed or Big Twelve defense to twenty four points, or whatever it was. Big Twelve offense or offense. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. They, this is if there's one thing that Big Twelve teams do, it's score and let other teams score. Yeah. Um, I didn't. This didn't feel like a Big Twelve game, which is was was interesting. Um, I would have thought that that would have favored ASU in this case, and it obviously didn't. But it, it was it was kind of a gross one. Well, you look at the three things that we kind of said at the start of the game that were tough, right? Special teams. Okay. Well, your defense is playing with poor field position now. They got their backs against the wall. Yeah. Okay. You're going forward a lot on fourth down, but you're not converting on these fourth down. Okay. So your defense now is put in another bad yeah. position time and time again. Right. So like th there are situations where the defense can play super, super well. And I think if you're watching the game, you understood that the defense did well, but you obviously at the d end of the day, see the 27 points or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, well, you know, ASU's defense, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Yeah. ASU's defense played pretty well tonight, at least in my opinion. And I a agree. lot of people in the chat seem to agree. Uh, let's go ahead and get to heat index. Cause there was a couple other players that I do want to just shout out a little bit here, starting with Elijah Badger, EK, scoring his first touchdown of the season on that 65-yard bomb. Uh, he was open, and yeah. he is fast as hell. He had three catches for 80 yards, and then obviously that 65-yard scamper for a touchdown. He also had two carries for 21 yeah. yards, Sean. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is what we expect or are used to. Is I mean, it's different than last year where it felt like Elijah was kind of the only playmaker. Yeah. And not the only one. I mean, obviously we had X and, and uh, Jalen later on. But in terms of like big explosive plays, like it was going to come from Elijah Badger. And not necessarily the case this year. You got other guys that can make explosive plays. But at the end of the day, he is your wide receiver number one. Um, and I think he showed why tonight. Um, again, I wish he was given more of an opportunity to to show off what he does yeah. or what he's capable of doing. Um, because I also think it would allow... Rashada an opportunity to show off what he's capable of but still it's uh, also still so early it is still very early um and I, I think you what you clearly saw today is that they had held back a lot in the first week and so this is the, really the first week they were kind of using the whole playbook in, yeah. in, in a game um or at least presumably the whole playbook so um I don't know I, I think I think as obviously as time goes on he'll get more comfortable they'll get more comfortable with what he's capable of um and then you'll see guys like like Elijah Badger making more of those explosive plays. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on with Heat Index. Going to go ahead and give some love to Shamari Simmons here. This is a guy, 10 total tackles tonight, six solo, one, um, one QB hurry, and then half a tackle for loss. This guy was all over the field. Now, I know it doesn't bode well when one of your starting yeah. safeties leads the team in tackles, <laughs> yeah. but Shamari was all over the place. Tonight. Yeah, I mean, that was going to be my first comment. It's probably not a great sign, but I mean... <laughs> the alternate is, I guess, in the situation is that he's not making those tackles. And yeah. guys are making big plays. Like, he, he's in the last line of defense. Um, and like you said, he was all over the place. So, uh, I, I think this game could have ended up, obviously, this game could have been a lot worse if the defense didn't turn in the, the great performance that they did. Um, and so props to Tamari and, and like we've kind of been doing the whole defense. Yeah. Going back to the offensive side of the ball, Scat. Scat, I know scat. I, I, it's, it's tough because. Sometimes you're gonna you're gonna look at this and you're gonna the be like wild scat. The the fourth downs come up, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh well, like, you know, we, we couldn't convert on fourth down all these times and it was a scat pack. That's not that's not on scat. Like yeah. scat had himself a, a hell of a game. And if you watch that kid run, my goodness, Sean Aguano, it was either Sean Aguano or Bull Baldwin, I think said it earlier in the week. Like, there are times where he brings his own block. He <laughs> he he's a need a fullback. He just brings no, his own he block. He does. I mean, it, you see it, you can hear the reactions of people in the press box, you see it on Twitter, like I think our friend Jack Loder tweeted out that he would rather get hit by an F-150 going at 70 miles per hour than try and, tackle, try and tackle Camp Scadaboo. And I can't say I disagree um, because that man, Cam, is is hard to draw, to stop. And, I mean, like we said, obviously it didn't go their way on a couple of occasions, but there were a number of occasions where they were running that scat pack or the scat package and everyone in the, the, the stadium knew what was going to happen, yeah. and it still worked. Um I would like to see them let him throw the ball sometime because that would take everybody <laughs> off guard. Throw that ball to Jaden, see what happens. Um, but no, nah, I mean, it, it's a little unsettling because it kind of feels like last year where it's like, okay, we got this one guy who's going to kind of do everything. But I, I don't think that's ultimately going to be the story of this year. Um, so it's really nice to know that Kemp's back there. Yeah, he, he's that he's that dude. 
I said it in the in the press box. Cam Scadaboo is Chef Boyardee. He's the <laughs> he's the old school commercials of the can, like just absolutely beating any obstacle in his way. That's what Scadaboo is. Like, there's nothing that usually can stop him. There could be a semi truck that is on a head on collision with the Chef Boyardee can. Somehow, motherfucker misses. <laughs> That's exactly what it is like. And God, I feel bad for the people that have to go and try and tackle Cameron Scadaboo. But yeah, again, he's, he's David kind of getting at it. He's a blue collar motherfucker. <laughs> like he, he's going to show up with work gloves one day. He's going to he's just going to punch you in the face and laugh at you in the process. Oh, yeah. Um, he's a guy. He's a little bit of a psycho. He's a guy in, that in you, you, way possible. you get to the fourth quarter and you're like, God damn it. Don't hand him the ball. Yeah. Like you don't you That's don't want to tackle him like Cam. Oh my! Could you imagine him in like the Mac and it's like November and snowing and you got to try and tackle that? Hell no! Ooh. Hell no! Ooh, that's good. That would suck, y'all. The country is lucky he's playing in the Pac-12. Yeah, because trying to tackle he was in the Big Ten, trying to tackle that motherfucker when it's ten degrees. Yeah, no, thank you. LTC kind of brings it up in the chat, talking about Tevin White. Uh, seeing Tevin White get a few snaps, hoping. Uh, for more of that very soon. Yeah, I, I want to ask you a little bit about that, Sean, because we saw Kyson Brown, D'Lo, and then yeah. Scat tonight. Uh, Kyson Brown, obviously, he he had the the one carry, his first collegiate carry, and he fumbled. Yeah. Uh, he That was a t- that was a tough hit yeah. in, in the mean, backfield. That, that, that fumble, I mean, you got to hold on to the ball the other day, but that fumble, I don't blame him too much for. Yeah, that was he, just I mean, a monster He put the helmet hit. on the ball and just got laid out in the backfield. And I guess you obviously ended up recovering it ultimately. Um, I want to see Tevin White and I want to see Javon Jacobs. Javon, I, yeah. I, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand it yet. I don't, maybe there's, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. Did the J- Javon is certainly a little bit of confusing because everything we saw from him, like it, you want to talk about playmakers, like he is dynamic and maybe it's a little bit of like, I don't know how differently you would use him from the way that you kind of use Elijah Badger, to be quite honest. Like, well, wouldn't that at least give him a break? Wouldn't that give him no, a No, 100%. Break? Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm with you. I would like to see him. I'm just kind of maybe looking for reasons for me, why they, they don't. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, everything we've seen from him, he's super dynamic. And he, he can, again, another playmaker. Ultimately, it doesn't matter if you're not getting the ball to the playmaker. So whatever. Um, and obviously, we know we're not, we're not at every single practice. We don't know everything. So yeah. Who knows? But um, I agree. It, it is. Uh, that was one guy that I think we every, we all expect to see a lot more of, and we haven't seen really any of through the first two games. Yeah, down in the chat, I want to see his offense let loose. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think you'll get there eventually. Oh yeah, again, only game two. We we do have some sound uh, from Kenny and the players that we're going to get to here in a little bit. Before we do that, guys, I want to tell you a little bit about Shady Rays. Sean, mm-hmm. all week everybody was talking about how hot it was going to be at kickoff, how bright. hot it was going to be. Uh, during the tailgates, etc., it could be hot. As long as you got your water bottle and you got your Shady Rays to block out the sun, then I think you did just fine, guys. You can shop the entire collection of Shady Rays at their brand new location, Kierlin Commons, a full-stop shop for all things Shady Rays. And if you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back and exclusively for our listener, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use that code PHNX for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The Shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. And, I mean, Shady Rays aren't only good for blocking out the sun. Sometimes you just don't want people seeing your eyes. That's fair, too. Sometimes, you know, you, God, you know you're, you're partaking you're in some high. activities. And, you know, you, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but sometimes, you know, you just you don't want people to know. You want to you want to be able to. And my favorite thing, honestly, is when I'm really high and I got sunglasses on. I could just I'm just in my own world. Like it's I, nothing else exists. Yeah, you're, you're a cool cat when you do that. Yeah, shit. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I walked yeah. in with some sunglasses the other day, and you were like, "I was, bro." I, you you like just had a different level of swag to you when you walk in with sunglasses. Because I was well rested. That's fair. That's fair. That's because I'm getting good sleep. Because because I'm taking OGs. There everybody. it is. There um, it is. I mean, tomorrow football Sunday, and you already know what we're doing: taking OGs and watching football all goddamn day. Not doing a damn thing otherwise, um, because uh, the OGs is the best way to enjoy just about anything, but especially a football Sunday, because um, they got something for everybody. You know, you're starting your day. You want it. You want to get hyped up for football. Sativa. They got it for you. You know, end of the day, your team lost. You're sad. You need to kind of wind down like Totri's going to need to tomorrow night when the Dolphins hey, you watch the your I'm kidding. Watch I'm, your I'm mouth for the Chargers. Uh, <laughs> but regardless, 
They got the Indicas. Settle you down. They got everything. Need some sleep? They got the sleepy time gummies. CBD, THC, one to one, happy balance, ratio. They got it all. They got all the flavors, multiple pack. They got it all. Unlike ASU's offense. Um, <laughs> so make sure you check them out. Check out our friends over at OGs um, for yourself and try one or a few of their many delicious flavors. You can check them out across all their socials at OGs Brands and online at OGsBrands.com to find them at a local dispensary near you. But you must be 21 plus to enjoy responsibly. Absolutely. Bees in the chat. Screen should be used sparingly. I said this earlier in the week. <clears throat> I felt like this was a good time for ASU to use some of those bubble screens. And you saw success pretty early on with yeah. those. Um, now again, I know maybe they, they beat a dead horse with running it, but it feels like when you have a, 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 th- a three man front, the way Oklahoma state ran, um, and those guys are all pushing 300, 310 pounds. You want to get them moving horizontally early in the game to wear them yeah. out. So I think that was maybe a little bit of the plan, but you know, I could, I could be wrong, but I, yeah. I, I think that's, I, I don't have a problem with screens. The, 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 the problem with screens comes when you're only running screens. And I think you see that a lot. Like, I feel like that is one of the chief complaints from football fan bases ever is their offense is just kind of running screens. Oh, yeah. Like, motherfuckers hate that. But people don't hate it Clint. when the screens are setting up 50-yard bombs. Like, if you can be aggressive down the field, the screens are fine because we have so many playmakers. Like, I'm fine with screens to Elijah to allow him to make plays because that motherfucker's capable of it. Yeah. Um, but not when every play is a screen or every play is behind. Like when it becomes, the offense becomes predictable, then it doesn't do anything. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think screens in and of themselves, like I'm not a anti screen on its face, but when you're too reliant on the screens, they become ineffective. Um, and so that that's what hurts. Um, but I don't again, I don't have a problem like whatever it takes to get the ball into the your your playmakers hands i'm here for the one thing i will say is to the people that were calling for for drew pine or or um trenton like the one thing that's frustrating is like if you're just gonna throw screens then trenton's better for that yeah like trenton's gonna manage the game and just get the ball into the hands trenton's better for that i don't want trenton starting because i would rather you be aggressive and throw make make, try to make plays downfield which rashada i think is the best at yeah um so that that's frustrating um, but it, again, I think this is all stuff that's going to start kind of getting worked out over, uh, throughout the year. And I mean, let's be real. If there's a year to kind of just kind of to figure things out at the gear where you're not playing for really anything. Um, and I mean, that that's kind of the sucky thing that hangs over all of this is that they're not ultimately playing for any kind of postseason. But, um, I think the team that you're going to get by the end of the season is going to be very different from the team that you're seeing right now. Um, I think they will start to figure things out. So by no means am I like, I am definitely not here for the the bench J5 talk. I think that's no. absurd. And I, I'm not by any means sounding the alarms that this team is not going to be any kind of good by the end of the year. Yeah. Andrew in the chat. Totri, tell Four Peaks to sell in San Diego. They only have Kill Lifter out here. I'll get right on that for you, Andrew. I'm going to see. Come visit us. I'm going to see what I can do. Or yeah, make sure you come out here and we'll, we'll hook you up with some Four Peaks. Yeah, I'll buy you a drink. We've had a lot of conversation about the quarterback. It's not, I don't want to call it a situation because it's not a situation. It's no. just you got a young quarterback learning. Uh, Jaden Rashada was asked post game what he learned about himself in his second performance as a starting quarterback uh, at this level. That's what he had to say. Jaden, what did you learn about yourself in your second performance with Arizona State? Uh, I just learned I, I got to deal with some things better, stay positive, and, um, just gather your teammates around. And, you know, you learn more from losses than you do wins. So, um, not complaining, but we'll learn from this and we'll come back better next week. It's a learning experience. Yeah, that's all it's going to be. I mean, I, I, yeah. At the end of the day, Jaden got this job because he deserved it. Um, he's obviously talented, and I don't, again, I don't think too much of this is on his shoulders. Uh, he's not without blame, but I don't think this is entirely on him. Um, and, and so, yeah, all you can ask for him in these situations is is for him to learn because that's the only way he's going to become like, I mean, if he came out here and was indignant and was, didn't take any kind of responsibility, that would be a bad sign. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think for. It, it's important that it's not just all football, right? Like yeah. th- there are plays that happen and he brings up that there are things that he thinks that he can adjust to or respond to yeah. in a different way, in a more positive way. Like, I think that is, again, like just a little bit more of a learning curve for a freshman. Yeah. And that's one thing is, is 
when you're talking about a, a guy playing quarterback as a freshman at a power five school, they've never dealt with failure. They have more than likely been the best that they have ever been around for their entire lives. Yeah. Um. So like it, it is a certain adjustment in that respect too. like it. You're used to Jaden Rashada has not played against division one opponents in his life. Like SUU, I, I don't, I mean, I guess a division one, but I hardly like, you know what I mean? They haven't played against, you know, top level college opponents ever before. Um, and so that's definitely going to be an adjustment. Again, I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but I think as far as the way he responds to certain situations, like adversity is going to be, at least on the football field is going to be somewhat new to him. Um, yeah. and, and so I think there's going to be, that, there's certainly going to be an adjustment in how he responds to that kind of stuff. And I think for him to be in the situation, fresh off a loss and for him to, for him to be able to acknowledge that like that's something he needs to work on and is actively working on, I think is is really good and, and shows just kind of what kind of person and what kind of football player he is. Like he's always he's always trying to get better. Yeah. And on the other side of the ball, we kind of talked a little bit about how the second half defensively was. You know, I, I think defensively it was still a strong point, but OSU was definitely able to to run I mean, the ball. The first half, yeah. Yeah. OSU was certainly able to run the ball more efficiently and more effectively. Uh, against that Sun Devil front in the second half. Uh, this is what a couple ASU defenders had to say post-game about how they adjusted to OSU's run game in that second half. Uh, I mean, with some of the things that uh, they brought in the second half, there were some misfits. Uh, I missed a fit, one of the fits that uh, led to a big run. But uh, other than that, once we started to dial in, uh, the runs that they were going to break it, as you see in the end of the song, I mean, look, not not a lot there, but this is, again, a game. Football is a game of adjustments, and this is the second straight week now where I feel like ASU has won the first half, yeah, but been unable to adjust in the second half and get the job done. You, people can put that on the quarterback. People can put that on the play calling. People can put that on uh, literally anything that they want. But uh, again, at the end of the day, it's going to fall on the coaching staff yeah. and the coaches are going to be the first ones to tell you they didn't do their job in that second half either, but they're also going to be the first ones to tell you that they got to respond. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I think everything it's, it's so tough because like, and I came into this game very much like the first game was a wash for me. I, yeah. I really wasn't taking a whole lot of way for, away from it because of what happened. And then you got basically the same thing this week. Um, and so I'm hoping that after a game where, you know, you don't have that kind of built in excuse of what happened in the second half, because I, I think whether or not they would admit it, I think everyone was probably like, I think everyone in that in that or in the program probably realized, you know, we're better than what happened in the second half. And that was in the first game. And that was significantly worse opponent. If we hadn't had that right now, it probably looks very different. Yeah, I think they probably all were thinking that to a certain extent. You don't have that this time. Like there was, there's no built-in excuse this time. You played a normal game, and so I hopefully um, they're able to like really look themselves in the mirror and be like, okay, well, we want to be anything close to what we, because I mean, we talked to plenty of these guys. They had high expectations for what they were going to be this year, um, and so if they want to be anything like that, they're going to have to, like you said, they're going to have to make a pretty significant adjustments and not like the, the second half. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the, this team in the second half against Fresno, especially if yeah. they're playing well in the first half, because. Now through two games, the story is they're a first half team and they're going to fall apart in the second half. That no team is going to be successful. Kenny has said it. Kenny has said it in practice, and I've said it on the show before. We are going to scheme. I will scheme motherfuckers open. I've said this on the first post game show. I've said it on previous shows before. Kenny Dillingham in practice. We are going to scheme motherfuckers open in that first half. We can't do shit if you don't want it in the second half. Yeah. He, he look. Kenny may be a mad scientist, but he's not a fucking magician. Okay, he can can he can design plays, he can get guys open, but at the end of the day, it's gonna fall on the players uh, to to execute the the game plan. Um, and there's several people in the chat saying that nobody's really pointing fingers; uh, they're taking accountability, which I think is huge. Right at the end of the day, taking accountability uh, for what the product was in that second half is, is big for what you want this culture yeah. to be moving forward right so we'll, we'll see obviously uh, what happens uh he does do magic tricks god damn it leah he's that is, quite literally he a quite literally is a fucking magician <laughs> hand up i fucked up on that one he does do magic tricks uh, on that note sean 
It's time for aftertaste, mm. buddy. Okay. Yeah. So just curious, what was brutally pumped into your food holder <laughs> this evening? <laughs> oh, like baked beans. <laughs> but like not what? good baked beans. Like baked, baked beans. beans made by a cowboy over a fire. And then the cowboy stuffed him down my throat and is like, you're going to eat these fucking beans whether you like it or not. Baked beans are so fucking good, I do though. like baked beans, but that when you're being forced to eat them. Is it like somebody's holding you down? I don't know. Like baked beans, yeah, it's the fucking cowboy. The Pistol cowboy Pete? That Pistol Pete that holding me down and force me. So, yeah, it's like in, in, on its face, ah, we played a football game. That should be fun. Ah, baked beans, they should be fun, but not when a cowboy's forcing you to eat them. That sounds fucking disgusting. Yeah. Um, and they were also made in the can over a fire in rural but Oklahoma. But like they weren't cooked all the way or something. Yeah, they were also made in Oklahoma. You know, fun fact, What's the that? only time that I've ever gotten food poisoning was when I decided to become vegan for three days, <laughs> and I undercooked beans, which is a thing, because if you buy them in, like, the bags and mm -hmm. they're, like, hard, undercooked them, food poisoning for a solid day was just, it was brutal. Um, yeah, I was no longer... So I'm baked beans. You're no longer beans. vegan than that. No, I'm going moonshine. Uh, oh. This game tastes like moonshine because it is. At least you get drunk off moonshine. It's a wake up call. Yeah, it's a wake up call. But the moment that shit hits your fucking mouth, you're like, this is fucking gross. The last time I had moonshine, speaking of a wake up call, the last time I had moonshine was when I was drinking around the world at Disney World. Um, because when you get to Morocco, they have like Moroccan moonshine. And you want to talk about a wake up call because that's about like. A third of the way through drinking around the world in the largest amusement park of the yeah. country. And you're like, oh, God. Oh, God. The mouse is here. I'm fucked up. I just had terrible moonshine. Oh, God. Oh, I need to get my life together. Yeah. Wake up call for sure. Oh, man. Donald in the chat. He is now a diehard. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Donald. go. That's huge. huge Turn me up, program. Donald. Huge for the program. Right. We're here for the future. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going moonshine because it's just it's disgusting. It's gross. At the end of the day, it's football. That's that's. The it's football is the it still gets you drunk for me. You I know think. what I just realized? Oh God! I need a new enemy, and I think Pistol Pete might be him because we're losing the the stand for tree. We are losing. And the Pistol stand for Pete's tree. weird as shit. I hate the motherfuckers that got. And I was telling you this before the game. I'm not making this up on the spot. I hate mascots that are like a big head and then human body from the neck yeah. down. It's weird. And then Pistol Pete specifically is like a giant plastic head. It's not like a fabric one like a lot of mascots it's terrible he's a weird ass mascot and i hate him pistol p is the kind of mascot that like for me it feels like if you took off his big head there would just be a smaller big head yeah yeah no and the worst part continues. is that I saw, I saw the cowboy walking around yeah beforehand because you pointed that out to me he's just a cowboy yeah like he's just walking around with a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and then he throws on a bigger head afterwards and he becomes pistol p i hate the motherfucker i don't know what other are there any weird this is a, show, a conversation for another day, but are the, there weird mascots? The, we gotta, we gotta have a, a Big Twelve mascot. They, they, oh, we did. Have, we have, they, did is, they did power rankings for yeah. mascots, okay. and it possibly was the most engagement ever on a Twitter <laughs> post of all time. There was a, there was a mascot in there, and there is a mascot in the Big Twelve, but I'm blanking on it. That is like half human, and like the rest, like part of it is a cougar, I think, and then the rest of it is like a human, if that makes sense. Where are you? I, I want to say oh, Kansas State. Kansas State oh, is yeah, what I was Kansas talking about. Is the weirdest mascot. Yeah, because I, I mentioned him earlier. He's got the wildcat head, but then he's got just a football player's body, like pants and shoulder pads and everything, and that's odd to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's super weird. Laker fan 23, the 5 o'clock shadow added to the creep factor. It does, dog. And when you get real <laughs> close, you can see, like, you, you got the, 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 like, chips out of his, out of, missing out of his head because it's old. It's creepy. The 5 o'clock shadow definitely, like, it... it he gives creeper vibes. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Look, we, we do have some final takes uh, and one final segment that we are going to get to here in a second. But first, guys, guess what, Sean? What's that? It's Sunday tomorrow. Ooh. You know what that means? Sunday in 10 minutes. You know what that means? What's that? It means there's NFL football. Tomorrow. Yeah, baby. We get NFL football. Yeah, baby. Guys, football season is back. And we already had people talking about it in the chat. Andrew, he's begging. He's pleading for more Four Peaks in San Diego. We're going to work on that. But in the meantime, all of the lovely folks in the Valley, you guys have the luxury of having the Four Peaks 8th Street Pub in Tempe. And you can go there at any time. And you can have one of their delicious brews. Or you can have their chicken tendies, which smack. Or we talk about their brunch on a daily basis. Go check them out. Uh, not only for their amazing food, but for all of the amazing drinks. And I was telling, I don't know if it was you or if I was telling Shane the other day, just 
you, you, we've hit the season now where it's the best months, September, October, yes. November, December. And I love these months specifically because of pie, because you get to eat pie during these months, right? Mm. Like the best pie out there. Okay. You know what? I'm not going to say it's the best pie. My favorite, oh! my favorite pie is oh, banana cream. Oh, shit. What? We're getting back to pumpkin cheesecake and-, and There you and, go. Oh my there God, Tom Green, turn me go. up! There turn me you up! Go. Hey, go. hey, hey, four piece pumpkin about, cheesecake? It'll change your fucking it. life. Totri, I forgot about it. Totri, oh you just God. brought the vibes all I the way you. back. I got you, bro. You brought, hey, I'm gonna take the mic out. We got. We brought it oh, all the way shit. back. We're back. Nah, uh, it, it, yeah, that and- uh, and he legit took the mic the, out. It was already coming out. I didn't just take it out. But that and the- French onion soup they got there will change your damn life. We're getting to the best. We're getting to the It's pumpkin porter we're getting season, to, baby. Yes! Guys, visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite brewery tours and God. events. Stein holding Oktoberfest and haunted brewery tours are right around the corner. Check out at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You do gotta be 21 years or older, and please drink responsibly. What's the uh, Donald saying y'all giving him bad betting advice? Yeah, I haven't been too good. What's that, hey, what's hey, hey Donald, I didn't ruin Sunday because technically my bet was dead on Thursday. <laughs> so that's I may maybe I ruined Thursday for you, but I didn't ruin Sunday. I also I'm also confused because I thought Donald Donald said he was on the East. Coast. I think Donald is Donald flying out here to be at the. I don't understand because Donald says it's three a.m. But like, I think Donald's but, on the East Coast Donald, and is flying out here are, for the game. Donald, tomorrow. are you flying here for the game? Can you please confirm? In because the chat? he said he needs pictures with Johnny and, and Bo tomorrow, and I I, I know Johnny and Bo are going to be at the BetMGM Sportsbook app or Bet. Geez, They're going to the be BetMGM at the Sportsbook app. tomorrow um, at at State Farm Stadium. Uh, because in case you didn't know, cards are back. I my laptop died by the way, so you're going to have to read the description. Okay, I got the, you. The, the actual <laughs> information, um, but. If you don't have plans for tomorrow, and even if you do, cancel them. Go to the BetMGM Sportsbook at State Farm Stadium. Bo, Johnny, the whole Cardinals crew will be out there for the game against the commies tomorrow. Um, listen, first off, if you haven't been out to the BetMGM Sportsbook app, jeez. If you haven't been out to the BetMGM <laughs> Sportsbook at State Farm Stadium, it is jeez. a vibe. It is a like, vibe. It, it, is, it, is, it is awesome there. It's so nice. And the people are so kind sometimes they just give you free money it's unreal the one bartender who's always there for us he is he's, always he's, there. A, he's a g i don't know if we'll be there on sunday um but also the brunch there goes stupid i keep talking about it the lemon buttermilk pancakes they'll change your damn life so make sure you show up for even if just the food just do it You're but no pastries show guy huh? i'm a huge baked good guy yeah you put something on a stove or an in an oven i'm you're there you're there. Love a, love a you good strike pastry. me as the, the type of person that would have been really easy to please with like a, a, a grandma stick and an apple pie like on the fucking windowsill or something. Oh, yeah. Well, I was anti pies as a kid. What the fuck does that mean? Sean? I don't know. Pies creep me out. I don't know. I don't know. They if it creep was, you out. I don't know. I think I was. I, well, I think I when I was younger, I was a little turned off by the idea of cooked fruit, which I love now. But I when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was the pickiest motherfucker. Like I was the most like I don't like that, even though I've never had it before. In my yeah. Life. Kind of person. I'm much more open now. Um, oh, Donald thought he was going to. Well, make sure go to the sports book. If you're coming out to the game. Oh, because the no, game's in Washington. Do Donald's go. going oh, to the game because he lives I'm in sorry. Virginia. And I'm sorry yeah. to kind of ruin the. That's okay. Yeah. It's well, okay. no, you still make better, money on the game. Yeah. Better that he knows now. Yeah, yeah better. Yeah, yeah, better than you know yeah. now than walking around FedEx Field looking for Bo and Johnny, just yelling for uh, Johnny and Bo. But you can still bet on it. Yeah, watch the game ahead. with Bo and Johnny. You can watch the post game show afterwards. Um, but if you're gonna bet on the game, make sure you're betting on Bet MGM because it's let's be real, it's the best sports book out there. Yeah, um, guys. There is a great offer that they have going on right now. Which, I mean, what a time to, for a good offer. First Football? BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app. Uh, if at least $10, you will receive $200 <laughs> instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com and sign up with code PHNX. Guys, sign up and deposit at least 10 bones into your newly created account and place a wager in the amount of at least $10 at standard odds price, a qualifying bet. Once you have placed a qualifying bet, you're going to receive up to $200 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your wager. Again, sign up for BetMGM. Make sure 
that when you sign up, you do use that bonus code PHNX. Uh, again, place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app of at least $10, and you guys are going to receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for full details. And now t- listen to uh, Mr. Winnebago talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope Y 467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. 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 All right, guys, before we get to our final thoughts of the game uh, and, and moving forward for ASU, we do have the second fan flick of the season. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Uh, it's this technically is... the fourth because there were three. Oh, yeah, you're right, because there was three <laughs> oh, from was, the first game. There was a lot going on in that first game. Look, shout out, shout out the student section and shout out all the people that really but, yeah. showed up and showed out I tonight. wanted to bring this up because I saw people talking in the chat about the, the turnout. First off, I think you probably were a little misled by the camera because the Oklahoma State fans were on the far side of the field. Yeah, um, I, I feel like there was a so- I feel like there was a so- first off, the student section has shown out two weeks in a row. Yeah, and so I'll say this: if you're one of the ASU fans that's out here and blames the student section for not showing up, not staying through games, not sure. look yourself in the fucking mirror because uh, they're the ones putting in the work right now, and I, I very much appreciate that from them. But I feel like there was a solid turnout considering the fact that. All the talk up to this game was that it was going to be like the hottest kickoff of all time. Um, and, and there was there was a solid I feel like there was it wasn't yeah. as good as it could have been, but it was a solid turnout. No, absolutely. It was definitely again. The student section was wildly impressive. So, again, shout out them. Shout out like, all the people that decided that this is how they were going to spend their their Saturday yeah. in the heat. So that's huge. And it's it's huge for the program trying to to build something uh, down the line. Donald, right? If you send us a picture of you and your kids watching the game from home, you can be a fan flick. You can make that happen. Sean's making the executive decision <laughs> right well, I now. Mean, right now. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Guys, you're sending this picture from Virginia in, in Sun Devil's gear. I think you deserve it. Sean, before we get out of here, just just final thoughts on uh, the game tonight. No, I I mean, it's a lot of what we kind of already said. You got to... It's inexcusable that to, to be two different teams the way they are in the first and second half. Um, uh, this... Considering all the hype and everything, all of it, Everything that we got coming into the season uh, today was unacceptable. Um, play calling needs to be more adventurous. You got to let JD5 go or J5 go. Whoops. Um, and, and yeah, JD5 went today. <laughs> he did go. I, although I did tweet out at one point that J5 was looking like JD5 because he, hey, motherfucker needs to use his legs more. I want to see it. That's not what we didn't talk about. There was a time that one fourth down play, he could have run wheels for it. Yeah. And he obviously ran for that one first. Down. Like, I want to see him. And I, it's, it's better than we went through with JD5 where we were like, this motherfucker runs too much. Uh, but I would like to see him, you know, trust yourself a little bit more. Um, but no, I mean, everyone just has to do their job better. That's yeah. all it comes down to. Um, and I think uh, defensively, BJ Green set the set the bar as far as energy and effort goes. And the rest of the defense needs to match that, which not to say they didn't necessarily. But I'm just saying it, it needs to be consistent in that regard. And the offense needs to the offense and the coaching staff need to pick their defense up and not put them in the positions they consistently put them in tonight. Agreed. Agreed. couple things before I get my final thoughts. Donald, where do I send it? LOL. Well, you're a diehard now, so go ahead and send it uh, in that Sun Devils Discord. And we tweet are. at us. And tweet at us. Was it just a Discord thing? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. it, was, it was on Twitter. Yeah, so it's um, PHNX underscore Sun Devils. Also, 59 of you in here. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Smiggity smash Do it, it for Mr. Bobby Hurley. Okay? He, he begs, he pleads at all times just for a like. That's all he'd like. Okay? See what I did there? You caught me? No. No, you didn't. I was not focused. Yeah, fuck you. I, was, right, I mean, tr- Donald was, was, I was talking to Donald. Oh, he's DM. Oh, he's just DMing you. Yeah. It's strictly just a, a your DM. hilarious. Andrew, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's, all I want is a pumpkin border. <laughs> all I want so is pumpkin sad. cheesecake now, dog. So sad. I might man. have to go to Jack in the Box just to get a cheesecake fix. Stop it. I, Dude, we were talking about. My final thought. I know Taco what we were talking Bell, about. Dog. I know what we were Taco talking Bell. about. Taco Bell, this sounds so good right now. Look, it is what it is. This team knows that they didn't live up to the the standard that they set for themselves in the second half. You heard it post game. They're owning up to it. They're taking accountability. Again, when you go out there, you you want to see more. You want to see a little bit more from the offense. You'd like to see um, the 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 play calling help out the defense and the decision making help out that defense moving forward. But there are still a lot of positives to take away from this game. BJ Green was obviously 
uh, a massive part in that. You look at Scadaboo and what he was able to do. You look at EK. Like there are still some things that I think moving forward, this team is going to take and they're going to learn from and they're going to utilize not only now but down the stretch and building the culture that is going to be Arizona State. But again, at the end of the day, the the same way that a win is a win, a loss is a loss. You got to yeah accept it and move on to the next one. They've got Fresno State. It's a new week. It's a new game. Right, it's it's got to take care of business. Beatable opponent. Yeah, like, another opportunity. Uh, I mean, and it's very different than what happened last year, but uh, I'll, I'll be damned if we get into another situation where we get into conference play and they're they're one and three or one and two when they should have been three and zero. Yeah, um, because that's exactly what happened last year. Um, and obviously didn't take care of business tonight, which sucks. Be- well, actually, no, it doesn't suck because I was gonna be like, oh, it sucks. The home and home with Oklahoma State's over. We don't get to see them anymore. Psych, I lied. See you next year. We'll see you next year in Stillwater, maybe. I don't Absolutely. know. It could also be here. Uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That is going to do it for this PHNX Sun Devils postgame show. We appreciate everybody staying up with us, whether you're here in the Valley on the East Coast or wherever you are, or if you're listening on audio as well. Thank you guys again so much. We are live just about every single day right here on YouTube talking all things Arizona State. So if you enjoyed the content, go ahead and give us a follow at PHNX underscore sign You can follow me on social at Anthony underscore Tocher. You can follow this man right here at Sean underscore to pause. Uh, freaking out over baked good as always. And we will see you guys Monday at 2 p.m. But for now, enjoy your weekend and pull up.